What's up, guys? Doing my follow up to the uh, stair building videos that I've been doing lately, and uh, I just wanted to give like more concise explanation of how to lay these out. Um, I showed you a scenario with a landing in part one and part two, and this will probably be a standalone video uh, that should help you to build any set of stairs. Uh, so we're going to start with just like a basic layout where you have carpet. They're going to carpet this, carpet all the way around, carpet the whole stringer, carpet all the treads, all the way up. So you don't have to make any deductions for this particular kind of staircase. All you have to do is measure from the top of your subfloor, measure from the top of your subfloor to the bottom of your subfloor. This could be from the first floor to the second floor. It could be from the first floor to the landing. Um, but let's say we have uh, 40 inches. So we're just going to take 40 divided by five and that's going to give us an eight inch rise. Pretty straightforward. Um, no problems there, right? Let's uh, back this out a little bit. So the only deductions that you need to make here are to account for the thickness of your tread. So if you have a one inch thick tread right here, then you need to make sure that your all of your steps will be eight inches, right? From here to here, eight inches. But your final step needs to be seven inches to accommodate the thickness of your tread. That way, when it's all said and done, you still have an eight inch rise out here, right? At the top of your stairs, you have to make a deduction for not including a, a three quarter riser on here. So normally all your runs are gonna be nine inches with a 10 and a quarter tread stock. You'll have a nine inch notch, nine inch notch. But at the top, because this is actually the uh, three-quarter ply that you use to hang your stairs. And if you're confused about that, you can watch one of the two, first two videos to see what that does. Um, but we don't put a riser on here when it's carpeted stringer. So there's no riser being put on here, which means that this becomes, if you make this a nine-inch notch and then add a riser to it, it becomes nine and a quarter. And what will happen is you're nosing on a ten and a quarter tread stock you'll end up with a short nosing at the top of your stairs. You'll have an inch and a quarter nosing, inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter. And then at the top, you got nine and three quarters with a 10 and a quarter tread. You'll have a half inch nosing on there and it'll look really, really dumb. Might not even pass inspection. So it's important that when you're not planning on putting a riser on your three quarter hanging material, that you make this deduction and you cut your, your top tread at eight and a quarter. So that once you put a riser on it, it becomes nine inches, just like all the rest, okay? So it's nine from there to there, nine from there to there, but every time, because you're butting into the three quarter, it's pushing you over three quarter, and it works out to be the same. So again, with a carpeted stringer, you don't have to make any deductions, okay? You just measure from your subfloor to your subfloor, divide it by the number of rises that you have and everything is all good. But let's say you have a scenario where you have three quarter tongue and groove going on top. Maybe you're putting three quarter on top of this. So you have, let's say this is the, uh, this is your three quarter plywood subfloor. And then let's say you've got three quarters tongue and groove, and then three quarter subfloor down here. Okay, so what do you do in that scenario? How do you figure out your stair rising? Well, 
The truth is that if you add three quarter to the bottom and add three quarter to the top, when it's all said and done, you're still gonna be at 40 inches. So if you put three quarter here, three quarter there, it still becomes four inches. You don't have to worry about that. The only thing that you have to do is make sure that you include in your bottom step. So now we had eight inches, eight inches, eight inches. On this bottom step, we have to make sure that we finish at eight from here to here, right? So the top of our tread is actually gonna be eight and three quarters off the subfloor. So it'll be eight and three quarters, and then you minus the thickness of your tread. So we have a one inch tread again here. So that means that your first step will actually be seven and three quarters. So you can see that's where people get confused a lot of times. And again, if you had not made this seven and three quarters, if you set it up for like the previous example where it was eight inches from your tread to here, you'd put your three quarters on, then you'd end up with a seven and a quarter step for your first step. And then your last step would be eight and three quarters once you put the tongue and groove on. So it's really important that you compensate for any material added at the bottom and material added at the top. So we'll do the same thing here. Well, when we set these stairs, our, before the tongue and grooves on, and as rough framers, usually we don't get to see the tongue and groove go on, but we'll make sure to set this up so that it's seven and a quarter to, from the tread to the top of our subfloor. That way, once the stairs go on, or once the uh, tongue and groove goes on, it finishes at eight. Again, nothing changes with the math. All you do is you just start laying out your stringers laying out your stringers, and then you just make your deductions on your first step and on your plywood that you hang it from, okay? So let's get to a more extreme example. Let's say that you have a scenario where you have tile on the bottom. So you got maybe tile that ends up being like an inch and a quarter thick, and at the top you have three quarter plywood. Okay. I had to clear the slate a little bit. Um, we covered scenarios where you don't have to make any deductions because either it's going to be carpeted or you're adding three quarters to the bottom and adding three quarters to the top. As long as what you're adding to your finished floor on the bottom is the same as what you're adding to your finished floor at the top, then you don't have to make any kind of deductions. You can just proceed, measure your subfloor to subfloor to calculate your rise. But what happens when you have three quarters at the top inch and a quarter at the bottom. You have to take your top number and subtract your inch and a quarter. That's gonna leave you with a half inch less height here. So we're coming up an inch and a quarter, and then at the top, we're not coming up an inch and a quarter again. If we were, it would remain 40, but we're coming up an inch and a quarter at the bottom. We're only coming up three quarter at the top. So that means we're gonna be a half inch smaller when it's all said and done. So our finish height here, is gonna be based on a 39 and a half inch rise, total rise. So we divide that by five and we end up with a seven and seven eighths uh, common rise. Now, if you had done this a different way and you hadn't calculated the floorings, you know, it's possible that you set this up at eight inches from your tread to your subfloor and then the tile guys come in, add an inch and a quarter of tile and then you end up with a six and three quarter first step, and that would just be an awful fuck up, quite frankly. So, and again, if you figure this with dividing five, uh, dividing 40 inches as your subfloor to subfloor number, subfloor to subfloor is 40. If you divide that by five, you come up with an eight inch rise, and that's gonna throw you off. It won't finish out right. You'll end up with too little at the top, or too little at the bottom and too much at the top. Um, so again, you have to figure your total finish to finish height. And you can usually do that by subtracting your top from your bottom. So if you're putting an inch and a quarter on the top and only three quarter at the bottom, then your number, your finish number would actually be 40 and a half instead of 39 and a half. So again, taking your top, subtracting your bottom, remove that from your subfloor to subfloor number, okay? So now, 
when we do our calculations, all these will be seven and seven eighths, seven and seven eighths, seven and seven eighths. And we have seven and seven eighths from here to here, right? We subtract our one inch for our nosing or for our, our stairs and I'm sorry, for our tread and we get six and seven eighths. And then we add our inch and a quarter at the bottom and we get seven and an eighth, eight and an eighth. So we end up setting our bottom cut at eight and one eighth, okay? So none of that is very counterintuitive if you draw it out. If you don't draw it out, it's kind of a lot to process. And if you've done many of these, then you can kind of just lay it out on the board as you go and uh, do the math. As long as you start with the right number, it's really important that you start with this number. A lot of people will fuck this up by taking the subfloor to subfloor number, calculating their rises. Maybe they raise the stair up and down to accommodate the floor, but they come up short at the top. Or maybe they match it at the top, they'll end up coming short at the bottom. There's just no way to do it correctly. You're going to be off by three-eighths at least, right? Um... Well, you'll be off by four eighths totally. You'll be off by a half inch. One of your stairs will be a half inch top, you know, off at the top or the bottom if you don't make all these adjustments. So again, just to repeat this because it is complicated and confusing. If you have a different flooring on your bottom than you do on your landing or your top, then you have to take the difference of the two and subtract it from your... Uh, subfloor to subfloor number. If you have more material on the top of your landing than you have at your bottom, like let's say you have carpet at the bottom, but you have three quarter to the top, then you need to add three quarter to your overall number. So instead of building 40, to do our math, we'd do 40 and three quarters. Okay, and then we'd make the necessary deductions at the top and bottom. Typically for carpet, I don't do any addition or subtraction. So if you have like three quarters on the bottom, carpet on your landing, then I will just take three quarters off the overall and I'll, I'll calculate my rise that way. Most scenarios that you're gonna come in contact with are gonna either be tongue groove at the bottom, tongue groove at the landing, carpet all the way, or carpet and tile. Fortunately, there's not that many combinations, but that's why it's so critical to know what the finish is before you rough in your stairs. If you don't, I can guarantee you're going to make a fuck up. So um, so you can see how all this is, is kind of complicated and confusing. Let's take a look at like how we would actually lay this out. Okay. So I don't have a perfectly set to scale thing here. But let's just say we start, we set our stair gauges at 9 and seven and an eighth again because our run is nine our run is nine our run is nine okay so i'll just start laying these out until i have the right amount of uh treads and risers i see that okay All right, so we got our first one, second, third, fourth, fifth, okay? So now we just square over and we just make it, we just square it over and run it wild because these are our two that we're gonna do our deductions on, okay? So now when I lay this out, this will all have been set. My stair gauges will have been seven and seven eighths, nine, all the way. Now when I get to my bottom, I refer to my deduction sheet and I make sure I make my bottom step at eight and an eighth so when I lay this out I'll mark out eight and an eighth I don't have that on here but you can imagine that's what I would be doing and then I would square back this would be eight and an eighth now I'd come up here to my top run I know that all of these are at nine but this needs to be shortened by three quarter depending on whether or not I'm going to have a riser on my trimmed uh whether or not I'm gonna put a riser on here or not. 
let's say in this example, I'm not. So I would shorten this to eight and a quarter. Okay. I know that's a lot of goddamn information, but that's why so many stairs get fucked up, quite honestly, uh, because it's complicated. Um, but hopefully this gives you a better idea of the process, how to go about tackling these problems. Let me just reiterate this again. If you have the same flooring at the bottom of your stairs as at the top, you don't have to make any deductions when you calculate your rise. If you have a thicker material at the bottom than you have at the top, you have to take, you have to subtract the difference from your total number. If you have more at your top of your landing than you have at the bottom, then you have to add onto your number. And um, as long as you're doing those things, you're going to come out with a nice set of stairs once all the finishes are in. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you.